Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. Tim Anderson here, the appraiser's advocate on a spreadsheet app that will help you conclude a vacant site value in neighborhoods old enough not to have recent land sales. Some time ago, I wrote the creative diddling worksheet, the CDW, to aid appraisers in their analytics of data. It is still available to purchase for $50. But if you hang around to the end of the video, I'll tell you of a special you just might find interesting. Part of the problem with an appraisal is analyzing the data to the necessary depth. With clear exceptions, we generally have plenty of data to analyze, but we don't analyze it since in many cases we don't know how. That's why I wrote the Creative Diddling Worksheet. With the CDW, you put your data into one of the tabs, use the worksheet, and then get an answer to your question. Take, for example, this page. You don't have the tab names on your screen, but if you did, you'd see it's the Assessment Analysis tab on the bottom of the spreadsheet, abbreviated ASS apostrophe T Analysis. As you can see, this is an analysis of comparable assessments. You can use this tool to extract the subject's vacant site value from an older neighborhood when there are otherwise no vacant site sales. In the appraisal literature, this process carries the name allocation or ratio analysis. What you call a process is unimportant. What is important is that once you're through with it, you will have extracted from comparable neighborhood data a site value despite the fact there were no vacant sites traded in the recent past. As the grid shows, I recommend at least 10 comparisons. You can add more if you want. I assume you know how to do that. What is great about ratio analysis is the data you enter are not recent sales, since they don't need to be. Really, the only filter is that the properties you put on the grid should, insofar as possible, be comparable to the subject. In other words, if your subject is a two-bedroom, two-bath, single-family residence on a quarter-acre site, you would not enter on the grid the assessment data for a four-bedroom, three-bath home on a one-acre site. They're simply not comparable. On the first line, enter the property address or some other identification. That way, if you need to replicate the data, you don't have to reconstruct your research. Merely look up the address. Next, you'll enter the assessed value for the entire property. This is necessary since eventually the spreadsheet will calculate the pro rata value of the vacant site based on the total assessed value of the entire property. Next, you enter the separate site assessment, already shown on the grid in red. In other words, for comparable assessment number one, this property's tax burden is based on a total assessment of $1,071,000. Of that total, $714,000 is the assessment on the site. Next, the grid lets you enter the site size in square feet. This is more for comparison rather than analytics. As you can see on the grid, the site sizes are typically between 9,000 square feet and 9,500 square feet. If you selected a property with a 15,000 square foot size, you'd probably want to eliminate it. This is what I mean by a comparison. The two aren't comparable. Next, the spreadsheet calculates the site assessment per square foot. Again, this is more for comparison than concluding a value, since at this point we're dealing with assessed values, not market value. Now we get into the meat of this worksheet. Via simple division, we extract from these data that looking at property number one, $714,000 is 67% of $1,071,000. The worksheet then carries this mathematical function out to the right. Thus, it's clear vacant site assessments go from about 58% of the total assessment to about 80%. We'll reconcile this difference presently. As you can see, the average site assessment is 69% of total assessed value. The median is also 69%, while the modal vacant site assessed value is 80%. So, how do we reconcile this? That's your call, but remember, you've got two indices of value here at 69%, but the most repeated site assessment ratio is 80%. At this point in your analyses, you're going to look closely at the individual assessment to conclude which of them are the most similar to the subject. It's probable that those with the 80% ratio have a premium location. 
Therefore, if your subject has a premium location, you choose a higher ratio. On the other hand, if your subject has a more typical location, you go with a more typical ratio. Just to come up with a number for this presentation, I went with 72%. This is well within the absolute range of 58% to 80%, as well as within the range of the mean, median, and modal values. But again, the ratio you choose here, 72%, the ratio you choose is your call. The last step is to apply this to the subject. Let's assume your subject was under contract for $1,250,000. Then, at 72%, your subject's site, as a vacant, has a value of $900,000. So, how does this part of the Creative Diddling Worksheet help you, the appraiser, arrive at a credible value conclusion? What's the benefit to you of using the Creative Diddling Worksheet? The analytics on this tab of the worksheet are a record of your analyses of the market data via which you concluded a vacant site value. Look carefully at cell C19 in green. It's linked to cell C16 in red. In other words, if you were to change the 72% to, say, 75%, then the site value would change automatically to $937,500. This sensitivity analysis is part of your analytics. It shows you went through various iterations to arrive at the ratio you chose. When you have a record of your analyses, your results are credible since they clearly are not the result of a single guess. And credible results, when you properly maintain them in the work file, are an absolute defense against any charge a state appraisal board may choose to level against you. However, if these data, if these analyses are not in the work file, you've got no defense. So the worksheet is a record of your actions you'll keep in the work file forever. It shows how you went directly to the market to extract a vacant site value. No guessing, no rules of thumb, no silly Facebook polls. Simply market data properly analyzed. Now, before the call to action, I need to explain some of the other notations on the worksheet. In cell M6, $712,643 is the simple average of the 10 site assessments. In cell M7, the 9,269 square feet is again the simple average of the site sizes. In cell M8, I summed cells C6 to L6, divided this by 10 to get the average of the individual site assessments, then divided that by 9,269 to get $76.89 per square foot as the average site assessment. Now, go to cell D20, which shows simply 1.26. This is the $900,000 divided by $712,643. In other words, it's a multiplier relating assessed value to total value. So, when you multiply $76.89 by 1.26, you get what's in cell D21, or $97.10, which approximates $93.25, which is the value per square foot of the subject site, assuming it has a value of $900,000. Now, for the call to action. Send me $50 and I'll send you a copy of the Creative Diddling Worksheet. However, send me $200 and I'll send you a copy of the worksheet and schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, one-hour Zoom meeting, just you and me, to explain the analytics on the other tabs. This tab, answer any other appraisal questions you may have, give you some coaching and mentoring and so forth. Take some action. I agree, $200 is not an insignificant sum of money. Yet, for the cost of less than one appraisal, you'll receive and learn how to use an analytical tool you can use literally for the remainder of your career. If you do 200 appraisals per year, that's only $1 per appraisal for one year, then it's free after that. That's the cheapest continuing education you'll ever purchase, and it may be the most relevant too. Thanks for being with me today on this video about the Creative Diddling Worksheet and extracting site values from improved sales via ratio analysis. Hit those like and subscribe buttons. I like it when you subscribe. So does the bookkeeping department. Thanks for listening. My email address is on the screen. It's tim at theappraisersadvocate.com. I look forward to hearing from you.
Thanks again. Be safe and well.